Hello. This presentation will talk about orthographic projections. Uh, there's two kinds of projections that are used uh, typically. Uh, two kinds of projections. Uh, and these are defined with the P matrix I talked about in the previous lecture. Uh, the first kind is orthographic projections, the subject of this presentation. Uh, these have no perspective. So, and in particular, the size that an object is rendered on the screen does not depend on the distance from the viewer. So the size of a rendered object does not depend on distance from the viewer. Uh, this is particularly useful for applications where you're doing uh, schematic drawing, engineering applications, um, so en engineering, um, any kind of CAD CAM, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing, any, t any time when you're drawing objects where the absolute sizes of objects is important and then you want to go look at the image and see how large something is. So where the absolute sizes of objects are important. The other type of transformations is perspective transformations. Um, and these do take distance from the viewer into account when you're rendering objects. So for perspective transformations, farther away objects do look smaller just by virtue of being farther away. Um, both methods um, pick out a region of free space. region of R3, and map it to the 2 by 2 cube centered at the origin. So I'm going to map it to, to minus 1, 1, cross, minus 1, 1, cross, minus 1, 1. Okay, so this is the, again, the 2 by 2 cube, 2 by 2 by 2 cube centered at the origin. Um, as such, by picking out a finite region of space, you can only see that region of space. Objects outside of that space are called. They're not visible. They're not rendered. And in particular, both methods uh, use near and far clipping planes which limit how close an object can be to the viewer and, and still be seen, and how far away an object can be to the viewer and still be seen. I think something that's closer than the near clipping plane won't be visible. It'll just not be rendered at all. It'll be just, you'll see right through it. Something that's further away than the far clipping plane is likewise clipped or called away, and you just won't see it at all. So for an orthographic projection, the projection matrix P so the matrix P picks out a rectangular prism area in space that's viewable to the to the viewer. So it picks out a rectangular region of rectangular viewable region. And so we've got, just to draw a picture of this, here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, here's the z-axis, which is supposed to pass through where they intersect here. And we've got some region, which I'll use letters like L and R. The stand, L stands for left, R stands for right. Uh, we'll have B, which stands for bottom, is the minimum value of Y. T, which stands for top, is the maximum value of Y, and we get a, this defines a, the front of a cube, and the cube starts at, 
with this is at z equals minus n. We'll come back to the minute. And the back of the cube is at z equals minus f here. And so this is minus n minus f. And n stands for near. And F stands for far. So I've got this rectangular region in space. It goes from X goes from L to R, Y goes from B to T, um, and the Z value goes from minus N to minus F. The viewer we're thinking of is at the origin. And the strange sign conventions on N and F is N is the distance in the z direction from the viewer to the front of the viewable region. And likewise, so n stands for near, so it's the distance, is a positive value typically, at least, uh, that tells you how far you go from the viewer until you reach the first viewable object. Um, F, which stands for far, this is the distance to the back of the viewable region. And the job of the projection matrix is to take this cube and map it. So what the projection map does, takes this cube and maps it to the 2 by 2 by 2 cube centered at the origin. So there's the 2 by 2 cube, 2 by 2 by 2 cube, centered at the origin. So the center of this cube is here. There's the origin. Okay, not a very well-drawn cube, but imagine a 2 by 2 by 2 cube. x goes from minus 1 to 1, y goes from minus 1 to 1, z goes from, well, from minus 1 to 1. But the minus 1 is going to be the more close front. So the, so the minus 1 corresponds to close objects. So, and plus 1 on z corresponds to far away objects. So this is a very simple uh, affine map to transform a cube of this type to a cube there. It's not a linear map because this, this center of the cube is not the origin, so we have to do a translation as well. But when we do this, what P is going to do is we're going to scale x by the factor 2 over r minus l, because in the first, in the cube we're looking at, the width between x values goes from, from l to r, thus total distance r minus l. In the target cube, we're mapping into a 2 by 2 by 2 cube, so we have to scale by 2 over r minus l. We'll scale y by 2 over t minus b. Uh, and this is because the cube has height that we're viewing has height t minus b, and we're mapping it down to a cube of height 2. And we're going to scale z by the factor 2 over n minus f, and this actually is a negative factor. The point here is that we're, think we're scaling, we're taking this cube, the front part is where z equals minus n, and that's going to map to z equals minus 1 over here. The back part is the place where z equals minus f, and that's going to map to z equals 1. So we actually have a negative scaling factor here that flips the cube inside out. It's a little bit unfortunate that OpenGL has this convention because it just makes life a little extra confusing here. But it's done and we have to live with it. So, and then we also have to do a translation amount to get the center of this cube to here. But that's what the projection matrix does. I will show the actual matrix on the next slide, but the intuition should be pretty clear that this is an easy thing to do with a scaling along the axes by these factors, and then translating.
So here is the, the 4 by 4 matrix for P. Um, we use the following. First of all, we've got the scaling amounts. We're axis aligned to scaling. We, we scale by 2 over R minus L on the x-axis. We scale by 2 over T minus B on the y-axis. We scale by 2 over near minus bar on the z-axis. And we also have to have some translation amounts. And the translations amounts you can work out for yourself but why this works, but I'll just write them up here, minus r plus l over r minus l, minus t plus b over t minus b, and f plus n over f minus n, and then a 1. So as usual, it's an affine math, the bottom row is 0, 0, 0, 1. We've just got the scaling factors here on the diagonal of the 3 by 3 part of the matrix, which is the linear component. And we have the appropriate translation amount to move the center of the cube to the origin. There's a convenient commands for this in, in the code that with this course we use set gl ortho as a command. Uh, this is based on the old legacy or in, in immediate mode OpenGL gl ortho command that used to be around. And the arguments to this are the left right, bottom, top, near, and far values. And the same for GL ortho if you're using OpenGL commands. And this sets the current matrix. If you have a, a matrix M dot set GL ortho loads M with this matrix here. So this is an easy way if you're setting a projection matrix. There's a built-in command that will just build orthographic projections for you. And that's everything for this presentation. The next presentations will take up perspective transformations, and those are much more complex.